morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. I'm so glad to see all of you, and especially those of you who are worshiping online today, whether it's this morning or this afternoon or this week, we're so glad that you are a part of our worshiping community today. And we are very uh, fortunate and excited today to be participating in Simon Hedin's baptism, and we welcome him and his family here this morning. I am Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Jen, and with me leading worship today is Pastor Laurel, and we are so excited to um, be part of a baptism today. One of, I don't know if I can speak for you, but as a pastor, doing a baptism is the best, right? Yeah, always. So we're so glad. Uh, we began our worship service this morning with our opening hymn, and as you're able, I ask you to please rise. <laughs> we make a covenant with God, making visible and claiming the promise of God to liberate us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With the promise of God's word and in the waters of baptism, we celebrate our adoption as children of God and heirs of new and eternal life. Through the power of God's Holy Spirit, we become members of the body of Christ, and as we live with God and with God's people, we grow in faith, hope, and love. Parents and sponsors, whom do you present to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? 
In Christian love, you have presented Simon for holy baptism. As you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you are making a covenant with God and are entrusted with the following responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to church to hear the word of God and participate in the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Simon may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to fulfill these responsibilities and help Simon grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, parents and sponsors answer yes by the help of God. Congregation, as you are able, please rise. <coughs> I ask all of you now to join together in confessing the faith in which we have been baptized using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and you'll see those on the screen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. People of God, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, do you promise to support Simon, pray for him in his new life in Christ, and will you support and assist his parents and sponsors in this responsibility? If so, please answer yes by the help of God. is a gift to you and from this congregation. We encourage your family to light this candle each year on the anniversary of his baptism. It will remind Simon and your family of the call to baptism and remind him to let his light so shine before others 
that they may see his good works and give glory to God. Let us pray. O God, giver of all life, look with kindness upon Nicole and David. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of how to live secure in your love and to care for people in your name. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with Simon the new life and freedom you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, God has made Simon a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Our lives are woven together to enrich, nourish, and bless the whole and all of its parts, so that the hurt of one is the hurt of all, and the joy of one is the joy of all. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome Simon into the Lord's family. We, we receive you as a beloved child of God and fellow member of the body of Christ. We promise to love, encourage, and support you to share the good news of the gospel with you and to help you know and follow Christ as we work together in the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Let's welcome Simon as a new member. And we'll continue with the next two verses of our baptism hymn. Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. We take a moment of silence for confession. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the gift, you are the tree of life, 
offering shelter to all the world. Grant us into, graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, the 17th chapter. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar and I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree nourish and flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is from Psalm 92. I invite you to read responsibly. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. On the psaltery and on the lyre and on the melody of the harp. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. The psalm for today. This morning comes from the book of Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe and once he goes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This time 
time for the children's message. So any children who are here, if you'd like to come forward and have a seat and hear the story, please do. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. We are going to hear a story today of the mustard seed, which is a small seed, and we're going to learn about how it grows. And good morning to all of you who are watching our um, special uh, worship service for today. So here is the story of the mustard seed. Hmm, Jesus said one day to a crowd of listeners, he tapped his chin. How can I describe the family of God to you? Aha, God's family is like a mustard seed. But mustard seeds are tiny, the crowd exclaimed. Jesus scooped some round black seeds from the ground and rolled them in his palm. When they grow, the mustard seed seeds turn into the largest, strongest plants around. Even birds put nests in their branches. Do you see the birds? Yeah, here are the birds. They look pretty happy, don't they? And here are the birds resting in this beautiful big tree. The crowd was starting to nod. Can you nod? Mm -hmm. They were getting it. It starts small, but the tiny seed grows, grows into something great. He stepped back to show a full-grown mustard bush as tall as two people. Does this tree look like it's tall as two people? Yeah, I think so. Tall as two people. God's family may have started out small, but each time someone shows or tells others about the love of God, it grows and grows. So the question for this morning is, how would you explain God's family? What do you think God's family is like? Do you think it's full of people who are kind? Yeah, I think so. People who show lots of love? Yes. People who are uh, respectful? Yes. And people who work, like we said in our baptism today, for justice and peace. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for your family. May we always share your love. And all God's children say, Amen. You can have a seat and we'll sing our next song.
tradition of mine at Christ the King is for each baptism that I participate in, my sermon is a letter to whoever is being baptized. So here is my letter today for Simon. Dear Simon, today is your baptism day. We're enjoying a relatively cool weekend after a long heat wave that broke the record for a string of 90-degree days in a row in June. Many people put out their pools and went to the beach for the first time this summer, and we're hoping rain will come through soon to water our dry grass. It reminds us of the power of water and how much the earth relies on it for life and for growth. At church this morning, so many people who love you are gathered, ready to celebrate God's love for you in the waters of baptism. After many long pandemic months of only online worship, your baptism is our first in the sanctuary in over a year. We are so glad your baptism is today. All of us gathered here are honored to make promises to you this morning Promises to pray for you, to support you as you grow in faith. This is the beginning of your faith journey, and what a way to begin, surrounded by the love and prayer of so many. It's as it should be. Your parents are full of wonder at having your new life join their family, making them a family of five, and at the ways you've already changed them forever. You are a precious, lovely gift from God. We thank God for your life and the joy and light you bring to the people around you. Your mom tells me you are the best baby ever. <laughs> so relaxed, happy, smiley. Victoria and Theodore, your big brother and sister, constantly say to her, Mommy, we are so glad Simon was in your tummy. Your family just adores you. You give the best chubby baby snuggles and you have an amazing belly laugh. You squeal with delight when you see your brother and your sister and the dog. Your name, Simon, means listener, which fits you well as you love to watch and listen to your siblings very closely. Your connections to family are evident in your middle name, James which is after your grandfather and your great-grandfather. And this morning you wear your mom's baptismal gown, which was also worn by Victoria and Theodore at their baptisms. Thank goodness for your mom's aunt, your great-aunt, who sewed the gown with lots of wiggle room. So you can still wear it this morning at nine months and 26 pounds. Today we celebrate that you are also part of God's family. You are a child of God, and this morning we celebrate your identity in Christ. You are created by God, loved by God, more than you can ever imagine. This will never change. Pastor Dan Erlander describes baptism as a big package full of beautiful presents which God showers upon you. We can open and delight at these gifts of baptism every day of our lives. And today you receive the gifts of friendship with God, the presence of Jesus, the seal of the Holy Spirit, forgiveness of sin, an identity as a child of God, a calling and a purpose for your life, and most glorious of all, the promise that nothing will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Isn't that incredible? You will always be able to look back at today and know you will never be separated from the love of God. You will always have an identity in Christ, and you will live your life in a way of holy justice and peace, letting your light so shine before others. Baptism is a one-time event with a lifelong significance. Throughout your life, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what you've accomplished or not accomplished, no matter how well you behave, no matter if you ever have doubts, you have a Christian identity. 
and your security rests entirely on the promises that God makes to you today. This morning we hear Jesus' parable of the mustard seed from Mark chapter 4. Many people have found great comfort in this parable for hundreds of years. When we feel as if our faith is no bigger than a tiny seed, it's reassuring to trust that God can take it and nurture it into the greatest of all shrubs that provides rest for the birds. This parable does not focus on human effort. The seeds are scattered, and the sower watches the soil day and night, not knowing if or how the seeds are growing. Isn't that how it is in the spring with you gardeners? The earth produces of itself, and the soil's transformative power brings life, and it's a mystery. The sower's job is to nurture, but also to trust and to live in that mystery. She doesn't need to understand how it happens, yet she knows it will, and she wonders at the growth. So it is with baptism. We don't fully understand its transformative power. We simply trust that God's grace is present in the water and the word, and that the Holy Spirit arrives. We don't understand why these gifts are for us, but we trust that they are. We also trust that as we witnessed your baptism this morning, we were witnessing the grace of God at work. God is adopting and embracing you for life, no matter where you go or what you do. None of us deserve this gift, but it is for us. And as we witnessed your baptism this morning, we saw the gospel. God's promises are extravagant, abundant. They are promises you can trust. You will always have an identity as a child of God. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ. You are precious, beloved. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are always a child of God. And this identity gives you a purpose to trust in God's direction for your life. You'll be sent to share your light with the world in your own way. Living out these promises will be your greatest challenge and your greatest honor. Thanks be to God for your life, Simon, for the light you bring to the world, and for God's love. Amen. Tanzania. 
So if that's something that you would like to be a part of, you may share your gifts today in that basket. Those of you who are worshiping online, feel free to mail or drop your gifts by the church, or you may give online through our website. And on our giving page, there is a place where you can designate your gift toward Masa Seaway. At this time, we'll have our offering music. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you sustain us in ways too numerous to count. Grant what has been sown among us and strengthen us to be loving servants for the life of the world. Amen. Let us come before the, tri before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Fill your church with the joy of life so that the good news of your grace may continue to take root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Today we rejoice as the seeds of faith and your love are planted even more deeply in Simon James Hedin. Bless his growing years with heart and courage and a love for you that knows no boundaries. Lord, in your mercy. Bountiful God, we are grateful for your partnership with our companion church in Masa Seaway. Protect them and continue to guide our partnership with your grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, even the trees, the shrubs, and the flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering from drought. Bring us rain to refresh our lands here in Minnesota. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Judge of the nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility dedicating their lives to service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and you provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer. Today we lift up those experiencing cancer, Ron, Robert, Phil, Paul, Rich, Terry, Wayne, Donna, Deb, Sheila, Shirley, and Jan, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and we pray for our church musicians. We are so grateful for the gifts they bring to us. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, the song from our hearts, and the whispers of greetings. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of courage. In this complicated time of racial injustice and exploitation of fragile people, we ask you to intervene and to make your path more visible. Bring comfort and support, especially to those trapped in cycles of poverty, homelessness, gun violence, and community upheaval. Lord, in your mercy. Calling God. You call us to vocations and to careers of varying paths. Help us to honor all, protect all, but especially those in the medical and first responder careers. As always, we are deeply grateful for those who boldly search for answers in their research. Continue to inspire those who create and distribute vaccines like the COVID-19 vaccine. Hold securely those men and women and their families who serve in law enforcement and the military. Today, we especially pray for Michael and Wyatt, Brady, Corey, and Joe and their families. Lord, in your mercy. With tenderness, hold your people whose health is fragile or whose hearts weigh heavily. Today we also lift in our prayers Jim, Barbara, Sally, Terry, and Terry's loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in, their, in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Together with all of God's people throughout the world, we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. few things to take note of this week at Christ the King. Our rummage sale is coming up on June 24th and 25th, and you can drop off any items you have this week, Monday and Wednesday. We have special hours um, that are published in the Trumpet. It is Monday, 10.30 to 12.30, Wednesday, 1 to 3. And also, our Habitat build is on for this year. The dates are June 28th to July 2nd, and it is, I believe, right here in White Bear Lake. So if you have any questions, you can talk to Craig. He will have all the information that you need. And for those of you uh, who are looking for a devotional, we have our Christ in Our Home devotionals right through these northeast doors in a basket. We have the next Porter's devotionals ready so you can grab one and take it home. And also through these doors are leftover bread and um, cupcakes and donuts that are from our bread ministry that we do on Saturday mornings. But these are leftovers so you all, all of you can feel free to take some home and uh, enjoy. Please rise as you're able now for a word of blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
place. The ushers will dismiss you starting at the back, and we ask that you uh, move outside as soon as you can to visit outdoors. Of course, the baptism family and friends, you please stay here for pictures. That's fine. So now go in peace. You are the body of Christ. We love. Thanks be to God.